This lesson will be on quantitative atomic properties. Uh, we're going to refer to atomic number, nuclear charges, atomic mass, protons, neutrons, and electrons in a moment. Atomic number, which you can find in your reference table on the periodic table, um, as you can see in the picture, they're the circled numbers on the bottom left-hand corner. They're equal to the number of protons in the nucleus of every atom. So it is very unique to every element because as we said in the last video, protons are unique to the atom. Uh, used to organize the modern periodic table of elements as well. So if you notice, you can go from one all the way to 118 in successive order. So atomic number and nuclear charge are actually the same thing. So the nuclear charge is the same amount of protons in a nucleus. So if we look at these examples, vanadium, atomic number 23, has a nuclear charge of 23, while uh, chromium, with atomic number 24, has a nuclear charge of 24. Any atomic number is the nuclear charge of that element. And if you think about it, nuclear charge, what has a charge inside the nucleus? Protons. So the sum of protons and neutrons um, in every nucleus is actually just the atomic mass. So it always has a whole number, and the atomic mass is equal to the mass number. So it's in the upper left-hand corner on the periodic table. And since they are always whole numbers, you'll notice that lithium, though it has a 6.941 atomic mass, actually be written as a 7. Beryllium is going to be written as a 9. Sodium will be written as a 23 and magnesium will be written as a 24. And the reason why it's a whole number is because you can't have partial number of protons and neutrons. So now we determine the number of electrons from the atomic number because the number of protons is going to be equal to the number of electrons because every atom is considered neutral and everything that you see on the periodic table is neutral. So potassium has 19 protons, which means it also has 19 electrons. Calcium has 20 protons, it also has 20 electrons. Scandium has 21 protons, 21 electrons. When we want to determine the amount of neutrons in the periodic table, you just have to look at the tiles. When you look at every periodic tile, look at the mass number and the atomic number. And to figure out the number of neutrons, just subtract the two. But remember, the mass number is going to be a whole number. So for lithium, you're going to take 7, which is the mass, minus 3, which is the number of protons, and that tells you you have 4 neutrons. For sodium, again, you round it to 23, subtract it from 11, and you'll notice you have 12 neutrons. And in potassium, that rounds to 39, you subtract it from the number of protons, which is 19, and you should get 20 neutrons. And if you're confused as to why these masses are decimals on the periodic table, we'll explain later on. So now subatomic quantitative properties, um, you have the nuclear charge, which is connected to the atomic number, and the atomic number can represent the number of electrons and the number of protons. The atomic mass is equal to the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So if you take the mass and you subtract the protons from it, you'll get the number of neutrons. That's a very important formula that you guys should probably write somewhere next to your periodic table. 